to welcome everybody to the Pearl City Neighborhood Board regular board meeting for September. And uh, first thing we'd like to do is if everybody could please stand and we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by Mitsuko. Thank you, Mitsuko. Okay, um, I'd like to I'd like to first start off about uh, our uh, policy rules. Okay, anyone wishing to speak must raise their hand and when recognized to speak, address comments to the chair. Speakers must keep their comments and reports under three minutes. Presentations must be kept under 10 minutes. And please silence all your electronic devices. The board may take action on any agenda item as required by the state sunshine law. Specific issues not noted on this agenda cannot be voted on unless added to the agenda. There's no smoking or alcoholic beverages are allowed in this pavilion. And as far as helping yeah, me enforce time and keep our meetings moving in a fast pace, I've given, I have Mr. Guy Inouye. He's got a timer down there and he'll politely remind whoever's speaking how much time they got left and uh, please keep your comments in those periods. So uh, starting right off uh, with our neighborhood board. Let's see, I lost my page here. I just have a few of our neighborhood boards here. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Blake Yokotaki, who's our vice chair. He couldn't be here tonight. Uh, we got Sol Ray Duncan down here to the left, Miss Kelsey Poaha to my right down here, Mitsuko Hayakawa to my left here. Andrew Itsuno is running a little bit late, may not make it. Mr. Guy Noy all the way down to the right on the table. Miss Elaine Funikoshi, uh, down here on my right. Uh, Antonio Valesco, all the way down to my left. And also Miss Dolores Salter Edge and our new board member, Miss Imelda Robertson, we're still uh, waiting for. And our neighborhood assistant, it keeps me straight, on time, and to policy, is Mr. Dylan Witzel. So first thing uh, we're gonna start off with, uh, everybody signed in, I hope. I wanna keep our records in order for our minutes. And starting right off is our Honolulu Fire Department. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Firefighter Josh Young from the YL Fire Department. And on behalf of the YL and Pearl City Fire Departments, here are the statistics for the month of August. So there were 13 total fire incidents, 136 rescue slash EMS incidents, and 65 other incidents. And from community relations, the Honolulu Fire Department often responds to hikers who are lost or injured. Use the acronym Hike Safe to recall hiking safety tips. H, hike with a partner or a group and have a plan. Each member of the group should carry a cell phone, water, whistle, and flashlight. The group should establish where to meet if members become separated. I, inform someone of your hiking plan. Let them know when you plan to return. K, keep a cell phone, flashlight, and whistle with you on every hike, including short day hikes. E, eat well and stay hydrated. Carry plenty of water, two liters of water per person. Per day is recommended. S, stay on the trail. Abide by posted signs and do not hike in closed or dangerous areas. A, ask for help early, do not delay. A minor, moderate health or medical issue can be easily exa exasperated by hiking up steep trails. Know your limits and pay attention to how you are feeling. F, familiarize yourself with the area. Use a map and consult government sponsored websites. E, accept changes in the weather and terrain. Expect changes in the weather and terrain. Bring appropriate footwear and clothing. At this time, are there any questions? Okay, yes, great, sir. great advice. And okay, uh, the uh, questions will first start with the board. Board members, do you have any questions for the Honolulu Fire Department? Okay, seeing none. Community, please come up to the microphone and identify yourself. Alvin Wong, resident. Uh, how do you folks find out where the fire hydrant is in a residential neighborhood? Because there's no red curbs, 
and there's no reflectors. Good evening, my name is Captain Shima. I am um, his captain. I'm from the Waiau Fire Station. Um, right now, there should be a hydrogen markers that locate uh, where the hydrogen is in the residence. Um, if there is no hydrogen markers, you can give the HFD a call and we can uh, assess the situation. And those hydrant markers, are those the blue tags right. that are on the street, in Correct. the middle of the street? Yes. Okay. Any response to that, Mr. Wong? I was told that they don't need the blue markers, the reflectors. They know where it is. So I don't know if that's wrong or right. <laughs> no, we currently still use the blue markers. Um, that is a easy way for us to remember because there's hundreds and hundreds of hydrants <laughs> and it's pretty impossible to know, know where each one is. So we do use the blue uh, markers on the road. And Captain, is there any area you want the Pearl City Neighborhood Board to be aware of that's a problem for you with the parking, the congested parking that we have in some residential areas where some people are actually blocking the way for hose hookups for hydrants? Currently, no. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We will be uh, taking a really good look at fire hydrants in Pearl City uh, parking, just gathering some statistics and provide work with our city council to determine uh, if we should move forward uh, with, with uh, more enforcement. Uh, because we do have at night when it starts to get really congested, people can't find that last minute parking place and they figure they could get away without a ticket or towing by just parking all night long covering that fire hydrant. So, but uh, I just want the community to be aware of, uh, it is on our radar to look at, uh, to look at this, this, this next session. And you, go ahead, Ms. Finikoshi. Do you check fire um, extinguishers, portable ones, that is? Uh, no, we don't. No. Yeah, okay. but there are companies out there that do check it. Um, the first thing we do, uh, we tell a lot of our uh, people that do ask that question is once it's, uh, it's of the three year, you can just uh, go to Costco. That's probably the Not advertising Costco or Sam's Club, but it's probably one of the cheapest out there. Okay, any other questions? Board members, community, one more. Oh, uh, there's a question from Mr. Wong. Check, check, check. Over the years, they've been changing how many feet from the fire hydrant you're allowed to park because there's no red markings. So how many, it used to be 25 feet. So they've been coming down like 20, check, check. 15, 10. Um, on that answer, currently, I'm not sure what it is right now. Is it 10 feet? Yeah. Yeah, so 10 feet, that's, that's where uh, people need to be aware of. That's how far you have to be from the fire hydrant. So that's a big 20-foot opening. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, seeing no other questions, thank you very much for the fire department. Now we have the Honolulu, fire, uh, Honolulu Police Department. Hi, Sergeant Nita, Pro City Station. Reading stats for August 2017. There are 11 auto thefts, 13 burglaries, 43 various thefts, and 11 breaking into vehicles. For the month of August, 2017, we had approximately over 6,200 calls for service. And this is from Manana to Newtown. Are there any questions? Board to members, to any questions? <laughs> Elaine? Um, since I'm the public safety uh, chairman, um, is it possible for us to, I don't know, uh, anyway, maybe a couple of us to go on a ride? Uh, with the patrol officers. I did it like 30 years ago. Okay, you want to be handcuffed and put in the back seat? <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have our ride-along pro um, program. In fact, we encourage that. However, there is paperwork involved with that for liability purposes. Um, you need to be 
all the Pro City Station, as for the community policing team, they may have uh, paperwork, or you can call the um, community affairs in the main station and get the paperwork to fill out to ride along with the, um, with the officer. Would that include uh, seeing a call come in on 9-11 to see how that call is processed? Well, um, the 911 calls is from the dispatcher, which is at the main station. So you won't see that part. You'll have it on our part, on our radio, where their um, dispatchers dispatch our calls. And then from there, uh, we, we get dispatched to the calls and respond. So can we watch a few minutes of that to see how you process it? Yeah. Well, if you, um, going to the main station is a different uh, process. They get permission from the dispatchers to ride along, to sit uh, with the dispatchers. Yeah. But to, to ride along with the officers, there's some paperwork you gotta fill out at the uh, police station. Well, I'm interested in the police city station. Okay. okay, give us a call. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And okay. this for and the public as well too. And Officer Nita, one thing I did notice, uh, since I do keep track of crimemapping.com, the website, for I've you. noticed in the last 90 days we've had a considerable drop in crime in for Pearl City. Vehicle thefts, burglaries, and car break-ins. Uh, I have never seen it that drop that, that much in a 90 day period. So, Thank, thanks to the police officers with your presence. Thank you for locking up some of those criminals because that's what it is. It shows that impact. Uh, board you. members, any other questions? Thank you for that comment. And again, it all goes back, not only us, the eyes and ears of the public. We wouldn't be able to do our job if it wasn't for um, meetings like this. And we can spread the word out and look out for one another. Right, and uh, the other thing too is uh, I've been on community email or social website and uh, we still have individuals with their boom boxes four o'clock in the morning going up to Pearl City High School and blasting their boom boxes. And I keep telling the residents to call 911, report it's not an emergency, but at the same time, uh, if they could get any description of the vehicle for you guys, because I know when you come up with your blue light, whatever, they're, they're, they're silenced. So, uh, and I know you guys have to be able to witness the situation. So uh, for the community, uh, if you have any type of loud disturbances like that, please call the police. Uh, Resident, uh, for our community, any questions for Honolulu Police Department? Yes, come on, and uh, please identify yourself. My name is Edward Fontes. I live in Haleohaole, Hawaii, right behind the police station. Okay, my concerns is in the Pacheco Park, you know, there's been a lot of um, suspicious activities with these young um, students, and somebody might even be in a college. They hang around in the park, like say four to maybe seven o'clock at night. They break bottles, they smoke on the bleachers, they trash the plates, they even graffiti all over the bleachers. You know, just last week, they even paint one of the bleachers all purple. Almost the whole thing with spray paint. I seen the spray can there, but you know, I, with all of them there, I cannot take pictures. Because, you know, they might jump me, you know what I mean? <coughs> and another thing is the same thing with the boom boxes. You know, at least three, four times a night, you know, about 12, 1 o'clock at night, that thing, you know, we live in that building right next to that parking lot. You can feel actually the vibration from that thing so loud. You know, if, I don't know if the uh, city and county, if there's any way that they can um, close their gate at night and maybe you guys do more patrolling there especially in the afternoon. Like this morning, I went out in the park. I walked my dog twice a day. I went this morning about 9 o'clock. I came back this afternoon. There was already two bottles broken again. And, you know, I've been talking with Larry Baroy for, you know, a number of months already on this problem with the city and county. And, you know, the glass is all over there. It's a safety issue. You know, you get on school. Elementary school right there, you know, all the kids going through that park. You know, and these people drinking and busting bottles over there. You know, I don't know what can be done. Or, like I said, hopefully you guys can, you know, probably step up the patrols over there. Yeah, so I'd like to add, Mr. Fontes, that uh, we have a due a committee that we formed for the Pearl City Neighborhood Board for Parks and Recreation. And Tony, down here, and myself will be uh, looking Work, looking at working closely with, with HPD to try to come up with some engagement plan. And I really would like to ask the police that when you do see a group of individuals in a park, if you could just kindly go up, show presence, hi, how you doing and all that kind of stuff, make accountability, let them know that you are watching, and maybe that will bring down some of the, uh, the graffiti events and trash 
And uh, we're working with parks to try to clean the place up too, because the peripherals had homeless uh, gathered in the restrooms. So thank you, Mr. Fontes. Okay. We, we, we still have it for action. And, and of course, uh, our, our, uh, our uh, mayor's representative, Mr. Biggs, he'll, he might have some things to say. This is a continuing thing. We just got to nip it in the bud there when, uh, when we can find out who's doing it. Thank I'll definitely bring it back to my station and uh, email uh, all the three watches and even our crime reduction unit, which are um, plainclothes officers. Sir. Thank you for your concern. Okay. Seeing no other questions, thank you, sir. And, you. Uh, good night. Stay good safe. Okay, and moving on to government representatives, we have Mr. Peter Biggs. Chair Veray and neighbor board members. I uh, just wanted to follow up on a couple of the issues that were raised uh, at a last meeting. Uh, one of the issues was the, uh, the bus 53 route not stopping at the bus station near the police station. Uh, we notified DTS about this problem and the DTS has uh, talked to the bus route 53 drivers that were made aware of this pass up issue and reminded to be more attentive for riders waiting at the bus stops. But they also indicated that it, it, should this happen again, certainly hope that it doesn't. Uh, it would be helpful to be able to have the date, the time, the location, the route number, and the bus number, and then send that via email to complaints at honolulu.gov. Yeah, thank you for following up on that one. The, uh, there was a question, I think it came from you, Chair Ferrey, about uh, uh, who's responsible for low-hanging electrical wires. And uh, so typically, the, uh, these, the, these should be reported to Hawaiian Electric Company, these low-hanging wires. Uh, again, sort of uh, building on what was talked about previously, uh, at the last meeting, uh, the issue came up regarding glass embedded in the ground at Pacheco Park. And uh, the, our Department of Parks and Recreation indicated that during the week of September 10th, the maintenance staff located and removed all the broken glass and will monitor the area. But I, I understand you will be monitoring it too, so I'm sure you will keep us abreast of what you find there. Yeah, we'll be doing that with our community eyes and reports. Yep, thank you. Um, and then finally, an unfortunate incident with uh, uh, neighborhood board member Inouye at the DMV where the electronic ticketing uh, the queuing did not work and uh, he was inconvenienced for a number of hours. So we apologize for that. That has been reported to both our department of uh, our customer services that oversees the DMV offices and to the, our Department of uh, Information Technology. I spoke to the deputy director there. They're aware of this problem. They're working on it. There is some logic that's somewhat uh, not working within the computer program there. So there's certain things that, that at times create this situation. Uh, they don't have a time that they have it resolved, but again, they are working on it, and we apologize for your inconvenience. That's all, I, that's all I have. Okay, Mr. Biggs, thank you very much for a detailed report and follow-ups. Uh, board members, any other questions? Elaine? I asked you to follow up on the whole Hecker Street pavement. Was that the one where we, we were not sure what the location was? Uh, what, the, oh, no, that was the sidewall repair. I sent you an email to, because I don't see any movement on that, but also on the pavement schedule for Hoheke Street. Uh, I apologize, and let me, I, I missed that one. Let me, let me follow up on that one for you after this meeting. You said it'd be done by the end of the year, so I asked you for an update on that. And as far as the sidewalk, I haven't seen any movement, and it's very dangerous because the concrete, are, uh, evidently the homeowner uh, put poured concrete and it's all raised and it's got sharp corners to it. So if somebody falls, they're gonna get pierced. 
Okay. Yes, is that the same location that you notified us yeah, before? It, it is Komomai and Huomalu. It's ever side on okay. Makai. Can you get that down, Dylan, and we'll follow I it up on it again. I sent you an email with a okay. picture on it. Okay. We'll follow up on it for you. Thank you, Elaine. Board members, any other questions for Mr. Biggs? Community? Oh, hold on. Sorry, Mr. Biggs. I don't know if this is a city or county um, issue because um, go, when you go up Waimana Home Road <laughs> towards the uh, community center on the left side, um, that area is becoming a dumping ground. You know, f I, this morning I saw a mattress. There's a couple of abandoned vehicles, and people are just throwing their trash out there. And um, I was wondering what, if anything can be done about that. Well, we can certainly follow up and find out whether it's our problem or, or, or the state's or someone else. So can you give us the exact location then? If you go wi up Waimano Home towards the Pearl City um, Community Center yes. to the left side, you know, there's some uh, homes in that area. I don't know, I don't have the, sh you know, ho Hokiakia before and after Hokiakia, that area. Okay. There's a lot of trash just being dumped there. Okay, we will uh, follow up on that and Thank get report so back. Okay. Community? Yes. Nothing about the bus, the bus service. You know, it's not stopping. What about, is there any chance them restoring that 53 and going into town on the weekends? You know, that plenty seniors where I live too, they gotta walk down to that bus stop by 7-Eleven on Cam Highway, and that's over one block, you know. And I'm, they restored plenty of the other bus services. I come, you know, restored a 53. And you know, on the weekends would be kind of packed too. So I don't know if it's about the ridership or you know what can be done about it. So I know the bus routes are all constantly being examined to ensure that they're uh, really utilizing the, the best routes. And obviously we can't go everywhere, but on that particular route, you're saying extend the route 53 to where? It used to go to Ala Moana on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Now it only goes from Waimano Home Road to Leeward College and you know that loop and back up to Waimana Home Road. You know, it would be nice if they could restore it back to town again. We will, we will pass that, that, uh, that recommendation on. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Fontes, thank you. Any, can Mr. I Wong? add to oh, hold, 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 hold on, Elaine. Sorry, can I add to what Edward just said? Uh, what happened is because of the budget cutback, uh, Bus 53 does not go to Ala Moana anymore on weekends. And there's a heavy usage of people having to walk down to Kamehameha Highway to catch the bus to go to town because 53 just goes down Waimano home, turns around by Lehua, and goes right back up again. It does not go to town, nowhere. And uh, people who, yeah, people would like to have it restored to where it goes to Ala Moana. It does go to Ala Moana Monday through Friday but on weekends they don't. And on weekends people like to go shopping to Ala Moana, right? And that's what it is. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll let the DTS know that. And we'll, we will provide you uh, a letter from the board that's so we can have the specifics in writing for you. Okay, you that, would be, that, that would be useful. Help me with that. And uh, Mr. Wong? You mentioned, you, thought, you mentioned you folks do studies, and have they ever considered a bus route for the most densest part of Pearl City? I'm talking about Ho'oli Circle, which is Holiday City, and Haleola. I really can't comment on what exact routes they have con uh, considered or not. I just know that the routes are under constant review to see how to maximize the ridership, the convenience of the public with, with the buses that are available. So I, I can't comment on a specific. So Mr. Wong, we will add that to our letter and also ask for a, a study. And part of that is for our board members here to actually get out to the community. Let's interview a couple people out there. Let's see what their thoughts are and we'll get that letter to you to help you out. That'd be great, that would be helpful, thank you. Okay, and 
seeing no other questions, uh, Mr. Biggs, thank you very much. Again, very good details. And uh, next online here is our council member, uh, Brian, Brandon Elefante. Great evening, Chair Verre, members of the public, members watching on Alelo, Brandon Elefante from the City Council. I apologize for missing last month's meeting. I know April Coloretti from my staff did a fantastic job of being here. I was uh, recovering from Achilles surgery, so back to being a little mobile. It'll take me a, a few months to walk again. I'm happy to be here and see all of you tonight. You do have my written report. A few things I'd like to highlight is on the front page of the report, the City Council honored the late Denise Romento. She was an advocate for the the hula culture, uh, grew up in the Pro City and area, and it was, uh, she just had the funeral mass, which was this past Saturday, it was well loved in the community, and it was really great to pay a tribute to her uh, and her life and legacy that she leaves behind. And we're also very proud of our local Pro City Thunder, who won the World Series for the Babe Ruth 14 and under and we recognize them with Mayor Caldwell. And a few other recognitions, uh, one person is in the audience as well, is Senator Breen Harimoto, and being recognized this past Saturday as a Pro City community leader. Um, so I wanna congratulate you, Senator Harimoto, for all your hard work and efforts that you've done. <laughs> as well as Doc Owejo as well. You know, long time community advocates for all their hard work, and they continue to work hard, especially Doc at his age, and still very active in uh, cognizant of a lot of things. I do want to highlight two couple, two legislations. Uh, today, before the Committee on Public Health, Safety, and Welfare, uh, we passed out Bill 70, 2017. Bill 70 would prohibit v people who are adults uh, who are driving with minors from smoking or using uh, e-cigs while a minor is present in the car. So that will be up for full adoption by the council. It did pass out today, four to zero. Uh, and that will be up for final reading at October's council committee uh, council meeting. And lastly is on the back of my report, uh, today the committee on parks passed out urging the administration to come up with a report on more fitness equipment at our city parks. Currently, it's our understanding there's about a dozen. Uh, one that comes to mind is at Neil Blaisdell Park where there are some pull-up bars that you see right by the Mackay Pavilions. And our hope is that we can encourage the Department of Parks and Recreation to do more of this to encourage more adults to get fit, get active, and as we've seen, it's proven to work in other cities to reduce stress and get more active and healthy in their communities. And really, our city parks are really our treasures and great resources that we have. And with that, that concludes my report, and be happy to take back any questions. Thank you, Chair. Well, Council Member Alfonte, thank you very much for uh, all the things that you're doing great for us, uh, especially these bills, the common sense, you know, the smoking and. Uh, and the other things, uh, the uh, as far as the uh, parks and fitness, uh, we have again a new committee, Parks and Recreation. Tony is going to lead that, like as chair of that committee, will uh, be providing you uh, inputs from the Pearl City Neighborhood Board to help you out. Uh, other than that, uh, Elaine, go ahead. You have a question. Any update on the lead program? The LEAD. Yes, uh, thank you for your email, Board Member Funakoshi. We did also report that out today, 4 to 0, uh, for, for, for adoption, and that'll be at our next council meeting. And when thank you for it. So it was adopted already? It was reported out for adoption. So okay. our next council meeting, it was be in October, and I can get you the date and details if you want to submit okay. testimony thank for that. You. You're welcome. Okay, other board members, any questions? Okay, seeing none. Okay, community, we have one question. Mr. Wong? I don't know if this is in your realm of coverage, but I've been trying to get a crosswalk at, in my neighborhood. And this is 30 years going. Okay. It's a 40 foot wide intersection with no crosswalk. This is the only place that you go in and out of my subdivision. And I just wanna know who handles that. I mean. People have been telling me it's an unmarked crosswalk, so you really don't need a marked crosswalk. But people are parking illegally, and I'm just curious, uh, is all crosswalks supposed to be ADA compliant by now? Thank you, Mr. Wong. Thank you, Mr. Wong, for that question. I know that you brought that issue up before with our office, so we'll be happy to look back 
and work with uh, the city's Department of Transportation Services that looks at, I mean, when you look at a crosswalk, you want to ensure safety uh, when you do put it down. There are areas where there are no marked crosswalks, in a sense, where it can still be legal. And there are also other areas when it pertains to highways that may deal with other jurisdictions like the state. Um, as far as ADA compliance, um, we'll have to take a look at that. It just depends on the area. And in your case, and where you live, uh, that's something that we can request the administration, in particular, the city's Department of Transportation Services, which goes out and evaluates and look at that and be happy to work with you. And Councilman Relafonte, we also have a due public safety committee that uh, Elaine uh, Funakoshi will be leading. And I'll be working with her to reevaluate crosswalks, making sure we have adequate crosswalks uh, in the Pearl City area, and we'll provide you our official input as well. Uh, any other questions from the community? Other than that, no other questions, sir, and uh, we will be healed soon. Okay, moving on to our state officials. Uh, we have uh, the governor's representative, Ms. Linda Chu Takayama. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the board. Um, I'm very pleased to be here tonight representing the governor. Hopefully you have in front of you uh, his newsletter for September, in which um, uh, I think the editor this month did a really good job of giving you a flavor of some of the programs that um, have uh, been conducted, uh, in some cases invented, uh, by some of the um, very talented people within the uh, various state departments. I draw your attention on page three to the DLIR's three amigos. And, and the reason I do that is because that's my department. But uh, <laughs> they've been doing a really good job in cutting down the amount of time that it takes to process workers' compensation. But you'll also see from the Department of Health, for instance, uh, recognition of uh, the staff who um, actually are implementing the uh, coding, um, the color coding for restaurants in terms of food safety. So um, there are lots of different things that are done. We also um, cite the fact that uh, there has been a slight drop in the number of homeless um, in this year. So we're hopeful that some of the efforts that are being made to address that situation are uh, beginning to show some success. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay, Linda, thank you. Uh, board members, any questions? One chair, um, the trees on, you know, the white model off ramp needs to be trimmed. It's starting to really interfere with the traffic. Thank you. I'll uh, pass that along. Right, no, those trees actually belong to the Waiau area, uh, the homeowners that are there. That are private that are, property, are you <laughs> saying? Yeah, they're bunkie pods that are hanging over. So it's, uh, it's really their responsibility. Just need to be reminded by the state. Uh, board members, any other questions? Community? Okay, we have one at a time, Mr. Wong. And then ma'am, you can come up and line up so I cut our timeline down a little bit. I understand the governor is very concerned about the environment in Hawaii as far as pollution. So why isn't anybody bringing in the hydrogen car? It's in production in Japan. Um, Governor um, does have uh, a great deal of interest in environmental issues. Um, in Hawaii, we are particularly vulnerable to some of those kinds of things like um, rising seawater, um, hurricanes, and those sorts of things. With regard to um, the hydrogen-powered vehicles, um, we are looking at that. Um, there are a number of problems um, uh, associated with that and that we can't, it's not something we can do overnight. Uh, but we are going to be um, testing a pilot project uh, at the airport with um, that technology and uh, to see if it works for us. And if it does, um, we'll be looking at uh, whether um, it can be feasible. As we've seen, for instance, with the electric cars, um, you can't just do it overnight because you've got to find a place to charge it and all those kinds of things. And the same thing would hold true of the hydrogen vehicles, but we are starting a pilot on it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, questions? Okay. Hello. Um, I used to live in Pro City for a long time. And but what's I'm, your name, ma'am? My name is Nola Rosa, R-O-S-A. 
I used to live in Pearl City for a long time. My children, my grandchildren go there at the high school and the other schools. Um, I'm up by uh, Heights now. I personally this morning raked up six bags of garbage bags full of Albizia seed pods up by Air Heights. Who's responsible for getting rid of those Albizia trees? I went to the Lelehua Pearl City volleyball game. Kipapa Gulch is so horrendously dangerous. Um, yeah, it's going to take away the strength of the hillsides. Aya Heights, I'm across above Camp Smith. The other day I witnessed I thought it was a, a swarm of birds flying across the whole valley from way above Camp Smith all the way below and it was a swarm of Albizia tree seeds. I mean, it looked like snowstorm. Who's supposed to clean that up? Thank you. I would appreciate it. I, I, I suppose it depends on uh, where they're located, um, but I will pass it along to the Department of Land and I'll pass that along to DLNR and see what can be done. Yeah, Ms. Rosa, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't aware of that. Okay. okay. Committee, any other? Okay. Well, thank you for bringing us our attention. We'll, we'll look into it. All right. Uh, Seeing no other questions, uh, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to uh, Senator Clarence Nishiara. Okay, not able to make it tonight. Moving on to Senator Breen Harimoto. Good evening, sir. Good evening, thank you, Chair. Um, Senator Nishiara couldn't be here tonight, so um, I actually brought his report, but I just realized I neglected to pass it out to you, so. I apologize. Oh, you have it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so we, uh, at the Senate, we had our second special session yesterday and today. Um, this was for confirmation of two judges for the Big Island. We are actually expecting to have another special session, the third special session, um, probably in uh, November for confirmation of additional judges. Um, so they're coming uh, uh, fast and furious to us, but it's very important that we get this done to get our judicial uh, vacancies filled. Um, then I just want to mention again uh, that uh, the community honored Dr. Ken Uejo. Uh, for those of you who have been around, uh, you probably know about Dr. Uejo. He's been a fixture in the community. Um, he's been the Pro City community leader for such a long time. And uh, you know, it was a well-deserved honor for him. And I just need to say that he was, I, I was one of the younger guys coming into the community. And he was my role model, one of my role models, to learn about serving the community, to learn about servant leadership. And uh, you know, he is just a wonderful guy. If you don't know him, please get to know him because he is just, um, not only a wealth of knowledge about Pro City, but you know, he's got a heart of gold. His heart is in the community. So we were so happy to recognize him uh, this past Saturday for his, all his accomplishments. And uh, I, I need to say thank you to Council Member Elefante for your leadership in getting the Pearl Harbor bike trail cleaned up. Um, you know, I think all of us have received so many complaints over the years. And uh, as much as all of us tried, to get that done, um, Councilman Elefante finally got it done. So thank you so much for the beautification. And uh, that concludes my report. Um, you all have my report, so I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Well, thank you, Senator. And yes, uh, the bike trail looks so good. Boy, if we could keep it like that. Yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, board members, any questions for our Senator? I just, I just want to make a comment, Chair. I've worked with Dr. Uejo from way back in the 70s. He's going to be 90 in February. And he's just, you know, been a real steadfast community donor. And I think he's tied in with Representative Takayama. But yeah, Doc is, I mean, he was a dentist and he just kept working, you know. I just, he's got a heart of gold. 
Yes, and I might add, when we first approached Doc to honor him, you know how humble he is, right? He said, no, 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 I don't deserve this. You know, honor somebody else. But we persisted, and we finally got him to agree to come and be honored. So um, thank you for that, Elaine. Yeah, thank you. Board members, any other questions for Senator uh, Community? Seeing none, thank you, sir. Okay, moving on to Representative Greg Takayama. Hi, everyone. I'm passing out a handout. Uh, a number of you have asked questions about the um, Kupuna Caregivers Program, which was signed into law a few months ago by the governor. And this handout gives you a little bit of background as to who may be eligible to participate in the uh, caregivers uh, program. It provides a small stipend to those who are full-time caregivers and also trying to hold down a full-time job at the same time. Um, so I'll be happy to answer any questions about that. The second thing I wanted to mention is, in addition to everything that um, uh, uh, Brandon and, and um, Senator Haramoto mentioned about Ken Uedjo, I just wanted to add my uh, compliments about the terrific uh, citizen leader he's been. A couple institutions in Pro City we take for granted were actually developed largely through his uh, guidance and leadership. Pro City High School, Pro City Library, um, our community parks, and even the marker that welcomes everyone to Pearl City off the uh, H1 fr uh, freeway. So we owe a great debt of gratitude, I, I think, to um, uh, Doc Oejo. Last thing I wanted to mention is uh, I I'm, uh, know that Senator Nishihara isn't here, but I think that if he was here, uh, he would mention a, a, a legislative hearing that took place um, last week that dealt with the possibility of a, a nuclear um, a bomb attack on Hawaii and precautions that uh, citizens in Hawaii can or, or should take. Um, one important takeaway, I think, from that is that if a, a missile um, containing a nuclear device were to uh, be launched to, at Hawaii, at Honolulu, um, we'd have about 15 to 20 minutes notice. And that's far too little notice to try and get in your car and drive to a, um, some kind of other shelter. You, we need to uh, shelter in place. And the best way to do that is find a place in your home that um, has as few windows or no windows, if at all possible. Um, if there is a blast, resist the temptation to, uh, assuming you survived the initial blast, to run outside and see what happened, because there'll be um, an immediate uh, radiation uh, impact that in its own way, it kills many more people than the actual blast. So the advice from uh, emergency management people is to prepare to stay in place for up to two weeks. So. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. The, the advice from emergency management is that depending on how close you are to the impact of the radiation fallout, you need to be prepared to stay in place for as much as two weeks. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Board members, any questions for Representative Takayama? Sir, thank you for that last bit of information. I'm sure there is more to come as that story builds, and, and we try to come up with uh, mitigation for that. And uh, that's why it's so important to have a strong military. Thank goodness we've got the military right here with us to protect us. Uh, sir, uh, anything from the community? Nothing right now, so thank you very much. Okay, moving on to uh, Representative Roy Takumi. Well, that was a note of optimism there. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, how do you follow that one? Um, um, enjoy your family, what can I say? Um, yeah, I'd like, like to echo the sentiments by my colleagues about Dr. Wedge, but let's not forget the mayor of Momilani, uh, Breen Harimoto. He's, he is also well deserved of uh, the recognition that the Pro City Foundation gave him. And thank you, Chair, and other members of the board who came to that event. I'm sure everybody had a wonderful time, and it's going to be repeated next year. Same time, same station, maybe. Um, I'd like to take a little time I have to talk about, um, to respond to the question. You know, over the years, I've gotten some people who say, you know, what do legislators do during the off session? Because we're only in session for four months. And the rest of the time, it doesn't seem like you guys do a whole lot. 
Um, and I can assure the community, none of us locked the door at the Capitol the last day of session and then dust off the shelves uh, the day before session opens. So I just want to share with you um, just my calendar. Today, this morning I met State Farm Insurance. They were concerned about a whole range of insurance issues. And you may not know that sometimes we have to step ahead of that. I'll give you an example. They talked about drones because drones are something very new. So should the state regulate drones? Because historically, we don't own the airspace above our house. Because if we did, we wouldn't allow a plane to fly over. But of course, we don't own the airspace. But when there's a drone that flies over your house, then what? Um, it's right now, uh, we don't have a system in place that would regulate that. And then I met with people from the employee's retirement system and the state uh, health retirement system. As you know, both those systems are millions, hundreds of millions of dollars um, unfunded. So what to do about that? And in the state today, there are 15,000 state workers who could retire today. Thank God they don't, because if all 15,000 retired today, uh, we'd be in a um, tremendous burden to try to fund their retirement that they deserve. Tomorrow I meet with somebody from Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs, and somebody from the electric company, and there's somebody from the Hawaii Coffee Company who wants to talk about labeling, because as you know, the coffee, the corner coffee industry is very sensitive about anyone out there that tries to label coffee as corner coffee when in fact it's not. And so they need some help in doing that. And then also somebody from the Hawaii Health Association then on Thursday, I get to tour Coca-Cola. Um, they want to, a uh, bunch of legislators are going out to the Coca-Cola plant to, to look at their operation and see some of their concerns. And then there's a meeting about the White Power Aloha Clubhouse, which I'm sure some of my colleagues will show up. Um, White Power Clubhouse is at YPO Point Access Road. As some of you know, it helps uh, mentally ill people. And so, again, we're gonna have a meeting about their concerns and then there's also an oversight meeting with HEMEC, the Hawaii employers for uh, workers' comp. That's not to say I'm a busy guy. I don't think I'm as busy as many, many of you. And I'm chairing this because I think some of my colleagues will have equally um, challenging schedules as well. The main point I wanna make is all of these advocates and organizations are coming to see us now. They're not waiting until January when the session opens to try to sit down with us, share some of their concerns, and see what kind of solutions we come up with. So that goes for the community as well. If there are any concerns out there, I would strongly suggest, particularly for those of us who are in the legislature, council meets year round, but for the legislators to sit down with us and now would be the best time to share your concerns and hopefully we can come up with solutions that benefits the community. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Representative Takumi, thank you very much and also uh, what you had uh, talked about uh, legislation. Over this next few months, this board is going to take an aggressive maneuver to try to be proactive to the early uh, bill drafting that you all do. And we would like to work with you and really take some creative thoughts from the community. We might hold a couple town hall meetings, but in, in particular, uh, agriculture and sustainability, uh, Ms. Uh, Mitsuko Hayakawa is leading that committee. We wanna provide you our input on what we'd like to see for an end goal. And, along, and also traffic and transportation, Again, with, uh, with neighborhood boards banding together to state solid requirements of what we need to be proactive with all the development that's going to occur uh, over uh, west and leeward central Oahu over the next few years. But uh, now is the time for us to act. Usually when we start thinking about this, it's a little too late. You already got your bills moving forward. But well, we're going to be 60 days earlier than that, I hope. So, so uh, board members, any other questions? I have a question, Chair. Um, what was that about the mentally ill the, the, um, all of us who, in fact, if you want to go visit, you can. There's a clubhouse on YPO access close to Waipaho High School. And they get a contract from the state to work with the mentally ill um, individuals to provide programs and whatnot. And so um, they have a problem with the access. It's weird because it's on YPO Point Access Road, but the sidewalk. So, um, and so we're working with the high school and, um, you know, a number of people, we all, we all meet to try to come up with a, a solution. I think we will come up with something. It's, it's not so much a program issue for them, it's more of an access issue, okay. sidewalk. Thank you. And let me end on a happy note, because I know we talked about the nuclear attack, and uh, um, the best line at the uh, Pro City Community Foundation, for those of you who were there, was 
you know, Doc was recognized as someone, and it was mentioned by Representative Takayama, that he actually played a big role in the way H1 was routed. And so the mayor said, um, if Doc could really help him with the rail and how that's routed. I thought that was a great one. Great. Board members, any other questions? Sure, I just have a comment. Yes, go ahead, Kelsey. <laughs> Roy, I just want to say thank you for coming and bringing your presence here. I'm guilty of one of those that have been bugging Roy, saying, what do you do outside of session? Uh, let me read you my skip match, OK, yeah. <laughs> okay. No, but thank you. I mean, I, I do understand you shared that this is mainly city issues. And you know, it's, it's refreshing to see people um, who represent Pro City come out and just to um, be a part of this in support. We have a community a concern question. I think this is a state issue. Uh, first up, I want to say I have nothing against people that have animals, because I, I have animals at home, you know, a pet. But when you see a, a dog in a shopping cart and it's not identified I think it should be identified. So is it a state issue to say that this dog is supposed to be my companion? So, or is it a city or is it a federal? Because, you know, my wife was saying, you know, the dog in a shopping cart and then somebody else is going to put vegetables or food in the shopping cart. So this is my concern. You have a legitimate concern. Uh, do you have a response to that, Representative Takumi, since uh, you were up last? <laughs> and you can, you can also use, you can always use your, uh, your, your get out of jail free card, which you're yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to ask, uh, is it in the health committee in the legislature? <laughs> I'm not on the health committee. I will follow up on that. That's an intriguing question. I don't know if anybody, I, knew the, I do know the Department of Health, um, and we were just talking. We don't know if service animals, you know, who, who, um, designates, because you can designate an animal as a service animal and bring them along with you on the plane and this, that, and the other, but I'll follow up on that. But as far as staying in the shopping cart, I mean, there are babies who throw up on the shopping cart. I mean, there, there are all kinds of... It's not identified. It has to be identified. The law says you don't have to be identified. What, what do you mean, like have a nameplate or something? I don't know. My name is Fido. When I say identified, like, you know, a vest, a tag, to identify that this is a service animal. But there is no law. But that doesn't get to your question of sanitation, though, even if it is a service animal. Okay, some of these dogs are being taken into our parks, state and city parks. Um, the poop they have to pick up. How can they pick up the pee? Okay, that's an existential question. <laughs> uh, uh, it won't get solved here. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, Representative Sam Kong. Hey, good evening, Chair, Neighborhood Board, community members. Um, not much to say, but um, no, dogs not allowed in shopping carts. Not allowed, period. So the manager should inform the patron to remove the dog. Um, Wow, Mitsuko-san, I have a big meeting October 2nd, so I don't know, I'll contact you after that for, to s arrange for an HEW committee hearing. I have someone interested in putting up container style homes on the Lehua project. And that person would actually finance the project put it in privately, and then have it completely affordable for the homeless. A philanthropy type of project, so it's very interesting. So we'll see what happens if, so we'll cut out the city in this project. So if we won't lease it to the city, it'll be actually leased to this developer. So it'll be very interesting, and we'll see how it turns out because so oh, very excited <laughs> what timing so we'll see what happens come Monday October 2nd is my meeting so I'll give you a call after that and that's all I have 
Otherwise, okay, good we'll to see you folks. Well, Representative Kong, that's great news uh, for uh, trying to find or and develop uh, small housing for, for the homeless issues. Correct. And uh, I'm glad Pearl City is taking part of that. Right. And we need to be very creative and continue to look at for affordable housing overhaul, transit-oriented development. Now we need to start moving forward with these ideas and work with Council Member Elefante and get these ideas out there. Start looking for locations and find somebody that would uh, sponsor, so, I mean, truly affordable uh, condo high-rises. Exactly. It's okay, thank you very much, sir. Any questions? Kelsey? Hi. <laughs> How are you? It's been a while. Yeah. Um, had a question on the container homes in the Hua. You ever thought about doing an upcoming town hall meeting for the community to? Right. Correct. So that's why we're going to see what this turns out, this meeting on October 2nd. And then I will brief Mitsuko-san and maybe have a HEW committee hearing first. Okay. And then stretch it out to the community, you know, step by step. And reach out to everyone. <laughs> Cross all our T's, dot all our I's. We have already reached out, like, like I said, to the Lehua Elementary, Pro City Honganji, other you know communities, Pro City Neighborhood Board, and go you know step by step and make sure everybody's contacted. But so we'll have a big one when we prepare for the community. Okay. So when was the last time that you visited the Lehua area? Today. Today. Are there any homeless still in the area? No. Nothing under the bridge? I mean, not the bridge, but the freeway? Mr. This is um, off of Hugh Street under the bridge. But Mr. Biggs, what a blessing we've had. I ran into some people. There's a city yard there nearby. And I ran into some people. And any, well, I asked them for some help. And remember, um, Pro City Honganji needed some help along 2nd Street? Mm -hmm. Well, th these folks, whoever they are that work for the city yard, they're the ones that help clean up all those shopping carts, all the rubbish in that area from their area all the way down to the Honganji. I can't believe they did that. I don't know if I can say this, but I should buy them some cases of beer or something, I swear. They were so nice to do that for us. What a blessing. Of course, the Lions Club went in originally, yada, 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 but the city yard folks really did us a blessing for that area. I don't know, how to, I don't know who did it, but they really came through for us. So what a blessing. So kudos to the city. So there's no shopping carts there anymore? Actually, now I've seen a couple more building up again, but it, it, for the Bond Dance time when they had it, that place was spotless, and I couldn't it believe it. It was not oh. spotless during that bone dance, because I attended oh, that, and, and it I was had to park at the again? elementary school, walk up. So that's another issue that I, would, I, mean, I did not mention to you folks, but that, that's... That's a hard place to that's keep. A, that's a very, um, I don't want to use the word ghetto, <laughs> but um, it's an area that really needs to have some attention to. Yes. You know, we have a lot of establishments out there. We have the daycare, we have the churches and elementary school, um, the courthouse, the yes. fire station. Why does it look like that? You know, so, when I walked up, the sidewalks were very uneven. It was hard to walk in that area. Oh, yes. Going to the Honganji, it puked, it stinked, it reeked, and it smelled underneath that entire freeway. It and was worse. There were shopping carts all on the side, oh, so well, it they, was not clean. They didn't clean up on the 2nd no. Street at that time? Um, they, this this is the, right by the, the freeway Lehua. across. Okay, right, right, right. Yeah, no. But at least on 2nd Street, they did that 2nd Street part for me. Well, I'd like to see a project come up either with on Lions side, or working with representatives, one. <laughs> something, just, just a clean sweep, something, know. you know, we can start there. It's so hard, but they did quite a bit of work for me, so I was so happy. It's okay, we'll okay. get the rest of <laughs> Okay, board happen? members, any other questions? I just want to ask, uh, yes. can you... Uh, relay a message to the Pearl City Lions Club. They're doing a fantastic job in decorating that uh, Pearl City sign. It, oh, yes. Yeah, the they, plants. They're out every Saturday planting. So can you tell them we appreciate it? 
<laughs> we'll do. I'll pass on the message. Thank you. Oh, Brandon, I think is part of that one. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Elaine. And Greg. Yes. Okay. Uh, community, any questions, Mr. Wong? Do you have a graffiti solution? I wish. <laughs> IAL has probably hit been hit us the hardest this summer for graffiti. I can't believe. So it's taken a lot of time. But the only solution I have we have come up with is to cover it as soon as we can. So we try to defeat them by hitting it as or getting it down or covering as quick as possible so not to leave their presence. So it's a hard job. They probably hit almost every control box, every pole. This past weekend, we were in the IAS Shopping Center Canal. That was a big one, probably 20 yards. Somebody did like a love note type of deal. It was kind of nice, but we covered that one. And we also did the bridge by the church. That was just this past weekend. So air, it's taking up a lot of time. That's why we have a mural project we want to do in Pro City. That got pushed back. We haven't gotten near. That's the one on the bike path that we want to do, the big wall. We haven't gotten started on that because we've been helping with the Sunset Memorial Cemetery, IA Library Project, the graffiti. We can't keep up. I have a solution. I talked to you about it, yes, but you don't want to bring it up. The no. Oh, the, oh, the punishment? It no. You have the time. Uh, you have to work with HPD. I used to belong to the IA Pro City Graffiti Busters. The original, I was one of the original members. Yeah. And we worked with HPD back then, and we had them come do the projects with us prior but it was short-lived and just getting these finding who's doing these graffiti is that's the hard part in getting them it's so i don't know yeah, but the community we just needs to be involved in, uh, we need with your the help photos oh the culprits this is on camera whoever's helping out in ia somebody's helping us paint thank you very much <laughs> and if, if you can call me up <laughs> i got paint if you need paint i can help you out but somebody on IEA is helping us i don't know who it is but thank you I represent kong thank you very much for uh, all the good le leading uh, the graffiti efforts any other questions saying none we're moving on thank you sir okay city state services board of water supply anybody here don't see uh pearl city public library uh, Kelsey, anything you want to put out for that? Uh, yes, Chair. Um, we are having a book sale coming up on October 22nd. It's Sunday from 9 to 3. Uh, we'd like to invite the community as well as the city and state officials to come and join us. Um, we are looking for some volunteers if you are willing to come and help to set up or break down. Um, uh, anything else, Guy? Let's go. Okay, seeing none. No? Okay. Thank you, Kelsey, for the update. Okay, moving on to military officials. So we have uh, Ms. Kathy Asobi here from Navy Region Hawaii Public Affairs. And she's also accompanied by Navy facility, Mr. Victor Flint. Hi, good evening, Chair, board members, and community. Thank you for having us again. Uh, just wanted to talk about the um, Pearl Harbor bike path cleanup. That was an awesome project. And do you know how it came about? Certainly thanks to our um, council members and support from there. But um, there's a retired Air Force colonel who is now on the staff of Mayor Caldwell, uh, Mr. Ed Hawkins. Um, because of our relationship, he was able to reach out to me uh, before the signing or before the agreement was renewed, that took a little bit of um, planning and you know, kind of going back and forth with the 
document and things. So thanks to Ed Hawkins, he um, really helped to spur that along. And so the um, agreement had been renewed fairly early back in April or May. And along with that, um, Ed Hawkins contacted me uh, to, to say that um, there is an ombudsman with the city and county, Brad Kitsu. So he was asking, hey, how do we get the bike path clean up? You know, the uh, mangrove removal. So that's a really hard issue because it's like we do volunteer cleanups. Volunteer cleanup is picking up the trash. You know, uh, our volunteers are really good about that and um, picking up a um, small mangrove. But this was cutting down the mangrove. And so because of Ed Hawkins and Brad Kitsu's inquiry, we were able to get the uh, first, class, uh, first Class Chief Petty Officers Association. They came out with the, um, with the chainsaws and the chipper and working with city and county folks. And so that's what took place on Friday. And so I you know, really um, um, commend our um, volunteers, not to pat ourselves on the back, but certainly you know, um, it's only because of that uh, volunteer effort, because if not, funding would have been very difficult to. Um, secondly, wanted to address the um, rumble dot replacement work. Um, um, Ms. Funakoshi, you, I believe you had asked about that, or no, it was the, um, somebody had asked about that. It was the city and county's um, Peter Biggs. I think he had contacted me. And so we've been, I know this is at least the second time I'm reporting on it. So we are um, Navy, did find out that that is their area, and so we're moving forward to install new rumble dots. This is in the Navy portion of Lehua Avenue, fronting Lehua Elementary. But because we're at the end of our fiscal year, um, we're, it's difficult to actually schedule the work, so we're trying to find funding for that, and um, we're hoping that um, if not, well, October is just around the corner, so we anticipate that it will be, we'll be able to do that in the near future. So once the schedule is available, then we'll be able to give you an update. And then on Red Hill, we have an update from Victor. Um, well, shall Kathy, we do thank questions? Thank you very much for uh, <clears throat> with those updates, especially on the bike trail, and again, uh, an opportunity for the Navy, in particular the military, to be able to give something back to the community. Those young sailors are always uh, wanting to help out, and you know, all, all it takes is somebody to ask. So as far as the community, you just need to, to work with the Navy or work with public affairs and uh, ask for that assistance for these kind of projects. Absolutely, yeah, it's getting to the right person because if not, you know, like any other big organization, if you don't find the right path to ask your question, it can get easily lost and, you know, pushed on the side. Board members, any questions for Kathy? Okay, uh, uh, community, any questions for her? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to Mr. Flint. Thanks, Kath. Victor Flint, Naval Facilities. Uh, this is our Red Hill update. Last week, Friday, I helped facilitate a tour of Hawaiian cultural practitioners, environmentalists, community and legislative leaders to actually go in the tunnels and tanks so they can see with their own eye because they hear about a rusty old facility that's leaking oil into our water. We did a historical tour first to learn about the history, how 4,000 of our local people helped construct Red Hill at a time of war. And just like it was important then, it's still important now with, with a secured fuel supply, say from bombs and bullets, electromagnetic pulses from nuclear devices, um, cyber attacks, and it can operate without electricity as well. So just as then, it's still important now, and they had a chance to see the operation. It's a modern facility with trained personnel inside, and there's no leaks, there's no breaks, and our water is clean and safe, and we plan on keeping it that way. So all of the upgrades are on time, on target, according to the agreement on cons 
on consent. So that's all I have. Are there any questions? Okay, board members, any questions? As far as uh, drones, do you got anything to talk about that as far as uh, the sensitivity of drones around military facilities? No, I don't have any info on drones, um, maybe. Um, on the joint base, drones um, are not allowed, but there are some uh, contractors who, um, through an agreement, can uh, drones have been used to uh, survey, you know, aerial um, areas because it does provide really good coverage. Okay. I just want to ask a question because uh, we we may look at that issue further for yeah, any type of potential regulation that might be needed. Okay. Yeah. I'll and if there's any update, I can bring it next time. Okay. Thank you. And we had a Hurex drill um, a couple months ago, and a drone was used to, to film how the drill went from an aerial view, where we had uh, um, large vehicles like the telephone truck, a Hawaiian electric truck, fire truck, ambulances, stuff like that, go through Kole Kole Pass, and it was filmed by a drone. So I guess with the proper permission and permits, uh, it can happen. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members, any questions? Seeing none, community, any questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for taking time okay. out of your schedules to come. Just one more thing, if, I, if you don't yes, mind. go ahead. Um, so we have the local Pa'ai'au fish pond maintenance cleanup coming up on October 7. That's in conjunction with, conjunction with National Lands Day. And so if you're interested in volunteering, I can leave some brochures here. And then um, uh, one more uh, uh, way that we're working uh, in, in this case with the, um, for the coconut rhinoceros beetle with the uh, Department of Agriculture. Um, coming up soon, you might hear about snakes. So I'm just saying, be, be, we might hear something about that in the news. As you know, the brown tree snake is um, very devastating, it has devastated the um, bird population in Guam. And so we work very closely with the uh, Department of Agriculture to um, monitor and be sure that snakes are not coming in. That's all. All right, thank you, Kathy. All right, have a good evening. Okay, moving on to residents' community concerns. Oh, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry, Manana. Uh, yep, Manana Community Association. Uh, Kelsey, do you have anything to provide on that? Okay, she is not here. Uh, moving on to residents' community concerns. Three minutes each. Anybody's got any issues you want to bring up? Seeing none. Uh, we're going to move right into presentations for Hart Public. What? Oh, okay, go ahead, sir. Yeah, we're going to get your microphone right there. I live on Luehu Street. I want to know who's responsible for cleaning the easement from the, say, the police department from their parking lot, the fence line to the street. You know that piece of grass there. That thing is unsightly, it's, you know, before the police department, the workers used to clean that stretch there. They don't do it anymore. And even that lady, Lola Rosa, she used to live in that neighborhood. She used to go and clean all by the bus stop and everything on her own time, you know, and pick up rubbish, you know, even on the other side, by both sides of the street. I don't know how come the police department don't clean, um, is responsible for cleaning that area. I mean, I feel that, you know, if the, they can make the property owners in the back street, they clean in front of theirs, why can't the, the people that work for the police department clean that section? They always blow their rubbish um, with the blower onto the sidewalk too, and they don't pick it up, they just leave it there. Okay, Mr. Fontes, thanks for bringing it up. I wish you'd have brought that up earlier when uh, Mr. Biggs was here, because that is a city issue, and also HPD would have been good for them to hear that because they need to take ownership of uh, the uh, beautification of their property area. Okay, uh, we're gonna move on to uh, Hart and uh, get an update from our public outreach team. Hi, good evening, Chair Ray, board members, members of the audience. My name is Johnny Reed. I'm with the construction engineering and inspection team with Hart. 
Um, with me is Justin Barfield, Justin Barfield from Non Inc. Um, Kashmir is unable to make it. She sends her regards and wishes. So I'm going to be going over some heart updates as well as construction updates. Um, Hart's new executive director and chief executive officer is Andrew Robbins, a veteran transit professional with substantial experience in public passenger urban rail, rail equipment, infrastructure, construction management, and systems integration, and is also a specialist in driverless transit systems, similar to the system being built here. He started with Hart on September 5th. As for other Hart project items, we'd like everyone to be aware that the third rail power system is being energized for dynamic train testing. The purpose of the testing is to determine train design characteristics, including propulsion, braking, and stopping at the correct spot at station boarding gates. Trains will be tested on the elevated guideway between the LCC and just past the Waipahu Transit Center station for approximately six months. Safety precautions are being employed due to the danger of the electrified third rail. Moving, moving to construction impacts, I'm happy to announce that the bus stop shelter on Camp Highway at Acacia Road at, in front of Home Depot has been completed. Shelter installations and other areas continuing along Cam Highway um, are, are ongoing, and Qit plans to wrap these up soon. Additional ongoing work throughout Pearl City and AIA include curb ramps and guardrail installation. Hart and contractors Qit and Non Inc. are partnering with Aloha Stadium officials to help improve traffic flow for those attending UH home football games this season at Aloha Stadium. Hart will be opening at least two westbound lanes on Cam Highway west of the stadium after all UH home games to help accommodate traffic and drivers leaving a lost stadium. There will also be a large police presence on UH game nights. Hart is providing additional police officers to better manage and improve traffic flow in and around Aloha Stadium on game days. <clears throat> Just a reminder, the Shop and Dine on the Line program is to assist businesses along the rail alignment during construction. The website is www.shotanddineontheline.com for more details and a list of participating businesses. For general project info, traffic updates, meeting notices, and more info, please visit the website www.honolulutransit.org. And if you have any questions, please call the project hotline 566-2299 or email a question at info at honolulutransit.org. And I'll pass the mic off to Justin Barfield. Greetings, Chair Ray, board members, members of the audience. Uh, so yeah, I work for Non Inc. And we're the company building the rail stations. That's uh, Pearl Highlands, Pearl Ridge, and Aloha Stadium. Um, we do have some lane closures, um, lane shifts, and uh, minor lane closure in the area of our Pearl Ridge station that will um, uh, continue this week and maybe early into next week. And then we also have a single lane closure by our Pearl Highlands station at the uh, Farrington Highway, we may have it later this week. Uh, Farrington Highway and Kamehameha Highway split that's down near Sam's Club, uh, kind of over by LCC. And otherwise, uh, we just continue to do uh, work uh, within our station sites at uh, Pearl Highlands and Pearl Ridge. Um, and we are hoping soon to begin full fledged work at Aloha Stadium. Thank you. Any, any questions from anyone? No, nope, exactly what we needed. Good, thorough report. Uh, board members, any questions? Elaine? I just have a comment. Uh, could you give a report to, to our neighborhood assistant so he, he can just copy what you reported? Sure. Okay, and again, thank you for the, getting those bus stops put in place with the shelters. Greatly appreciated. Okay. Okay, got a question from the community? Come on up, Mr. Wong, and then followed by Mr. Fontes. Can you tell me if the public from or the people from Pearl City can ride, I mean, the rail going Kapule before they reach Ala Moana Shopping Center? Oh, yes. So the rail will go in both directions. It'll dra drive the same way as uh, Farrington Highway and Camp Highway does. So if you board at Pearl City, you can go west to Kapule or you can go east to Ala Moana, depending on your... Will, be, will we be able to ride it before it reaches Ala Moana Shopping Center? That's my question. Oh, yes. So, um, Kiwit has finished the overhead guideway from East Kapolei to the stadium. So, the overhead structures are done. What we're doing now is we're building stations to support that guideway. Uh, we're looking at doing a partial run for the first 10 miles of the elevated section from Kapolei to the stadium uh, about 2021 in that, in that time frame. 
Uh, it'll, it'll be in passenger revenue service in that time frame, and hopefully we're booking along towards Ala Moana. And we're looking at a full completion about 2025 area. Yes, I get concerned concern about, you know, you, you talked about finishing the bus shelters. Okay, plenty of these intersections and where you guys making the curbs and stuff, you know, you, you guys got to take into more consideration the people on a wheelchair, like myself. There's plenty of times from that um, Acacia all the way to Pearl Ridge, you know, they're signed rad, plenty of time navigating in that areas because you guys cone the thing off. I understand it's one safety issue, but then I have no way of getting to any other places because it's all combed off. Even in Pearl Ridge, you know, there's, I don't even go there, I get out of time because on that um, Malka site, by the bank and stuff, you know, there's times I have to go all the way in the parking lot, all the way around, just to get to the bus stop because there's no access. And one time I even had to go inform one of the workers to go put plywood down because you guys had on sign redirecting um, saying sidewalk closed, used this way. I go that way and I come to a curb. I, I kind of jump off the curb. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh yeah, thank you. So I work with Kiwit, Dredging, and Non for the construction side, so we kind of work with all of them to make sure everyone's kind of um, playing nicely on the roads. Uh, for that concern, so what's, what's keeping up the curb ramps from being done is there's different fiber optic switchovers that need to happen under the cement. So once they finish those switchovers, they can pour the panels and kind of button up. So those curb ramps that aren't done yet or because they're waiting for a switchover, we are aware of certain issues. Um, we're constantly addressing those and make sure the cones have enough uh, space for ADA uh, folks to get through. But yeah, by all means, I'll get your information. If there's any specific areas beyond what you mentioned, I'll, I'll point them out and bring them up to our contractors and remediate for that. Sure. Okay, thank you. For, great for the updates. Uh, seeing no other questions, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the Pearl City Parade Planning by Ms. Sherry Rolfe. Aloha, thank you so much. Chair of Bray and members of the neighborhood board, and thank you for your service. <laughs> thank, thank you for the to the uh, community for being here. I represent the Christmas parade, and so let me just be maybe one of the first ones to say "Mele Kalikimaka Ihaole Makihikiho." Already, <laughs> that's what we're here to do. Is we're uh, I'm representing the Pearl City Christmas Parade, the community parade here for Pearl City to seek a recommendation from the neighborhood board to uh, receive our permit to have this parade here. The parade has a rich uh, history here in Pearl City. It started off when I came aboard, it was a, uh, uh, the Makuli Club and they had a float and the Pearl City High School marching band and Santa and they would go throughout the neighborhoods throwing candy. And uh, now it's evolved into a uh, more encompassing of the community members. And so it's led now from uh, Momilani Elementary. We line up there at 2 o'clock. And uh, it's led, uh, escorted by the police for safety. It generally is, uh, in fact, I can't remember when it hasn't been, led by the fire department. Uh, their truck is always out in front. And uh, that's only on the agreement that they can, they're not on duty, <laughs> so they're not off fighting fires and saving lives. Uh, but within our community, this parade has evolved into just a wonderful uh, group of people supporting other people and giving young kids an opportunity to really shine in their own community amongst their friends and their teachers, their parents and grandparents, and it's just awesome. You will see the police coming down, then the fire truck, and then it's always led by the Pearl City Marching Band, our award-winning Pearl City Marching Band. And wow, what excitement that we have coming down here. We have um, everything from car clubs to football players, teams, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. Um, here's a little list. We have the community groups, businesses, the schools have choruses and floats, costume characters. Hiko always brings their uh, lighted electric light parade float. And uh, we have 
uh, churches, we have dancing groups, we have our official parade marshal, of course, is the end unit, and that's Santa, who come to uh, hopefully hear little wishes. And then it always ends at the Pro City Shopping Center, fronting McDonald's in that little area there. Of, it's uh, uh, all cleared out of cars for safety. Um, and uh, Bank of Hawaii, that whole area there, that's the ending. And we have a little award ceremony where we give away uh, three different categories of awards. It's very brief. People are back out on the streets. It's been a long day for them. They line up at 2 o'clock. 4 o'clock is parade time. And we've done this for years and years and years and years. And uh, so far as I know, we've never had a complaint. At least it's not made it back to me, and uh, I think it would. <laughs> so all of the information is posted for everyone to be uh, equally involved. So the permit, you can go to the mypearlcity.com. Everything is there. Um, and I, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions? Board members, do you have any questions? Yes. What day is this? It's traditionally the first Sunday of December. So this year, that falls on December 3rd. Okay, thank you. I was, when I was, actually it was in the Macaulay Club, it was a Pearl City Community Association and the Macaulay Club. Oh, I was president right? I of the Pearl City of Association. Okay. Awesome. So I rode on the fire truck and gave oh, candy did. away. Anyway, on that particular day, it rained cats and dogs. The Santa Claus and I was just dripping wet. But it, it's fun. It is, it fun. is fun. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. And what is your association with this? Are you? I'm a board member of the Pearl City Shopping Center Merchants Association, oh, okay. and uh, they sponsor the parade. Okay, thank for you. Years. So even when you were, uh, even when you were on the float yeah. with Santa, they've yeah. sponsored that for years. I know years. we got a lot of candy. So chair, I move to uh, approve this Christmas parade. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay, unanimous. So Hello. Sherry, I got a letter for you for Department <laughs> of Transportation Services. Such a great event for our community. And I'm hoping our board will be creative and try to find a way where we could fit into the floats somewhere. Uh, very rough to join us. And, and uh, if I can work things out with my spouse because she has a vet that day. I also fly out that night. <laughs> uh, I'll try to work it out. But uh, let me give you this letter. You're all set for your, your approval from the board. Just saying next year, you know, you're invited too. You can't make it this year. Right. Always the first one. Right. Well, I'm sure the leadership of this board here, uh, I'm sure you'll be hearing from them. Well, thank you very much. Okay, uh, moving on to uh, reports. Okay, Andrew's not here for the treasurer's report, but Mitsuko, she's going to fill in for him. Okay. So um, our remaining balance is $323.84. Great, thank you. Okay, and as far as uh, meetings attended by the board members, I know that Elaine, you've been very busy this last month. Real quickly, can you keep it short? I gave Dylan the whole thing, so I'll just say I went to a naloxone, I can not, naloxone briefing. And um, what I just wanna say is that it's, it saves lives. Uh, it reverses the opioid um, overdose. So you, uh, when they're overdosing and you give them this medicine, it'll, it'll save them. So that's, you know, it's a wonderful program. Anyway, I went to that meeting and then I, uh, had, I gave two tours at the Pacific, <coughs> excuse me, Pacific Aviation Museum. And I, I'm the captain for security block, we did that. And then we did, uh, I helped with the first assembly video visit for the incarcerated families. And I went to Parks and Rec meeting at uh, Salt Lake, and you know, I've got to mention this. If you notice, um, Robbie <coughs> Bond, uh, he, was, he went to Washington and was recognized. This little kid, you know, he's just working hard and encouraging kids to go and visit, uh, and, and visit and use the parks, and he's fundraising by himself, going to, you know, uh, key people, and uh, it's amazing, but Robin himself, was very involved in the Hanoma Bay thing. He was always tied in with oceans. So I just want to mention that. Oh, I went to the HCR 85 program. And this one, we had a briefing from um, this. They, they got a, something like 1.4 million grant uh, to research and evaluate public safety. Perhaps they call it. It's a University of Hawaii Manoa program 
working with public safety. That's all I want to say on that. And, and then the last thing was I submitted a testimony on the late thing and passed. It was nice that Councilman Elefante said they passed it. So thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Elaine. Okay, uh, moving on to our regular board meeting minutes approval. Uh, anybody see anything that needs to be changed? I see something. Okay, go ahead. Uh, it should say uh, smoking at not Pacheco Park, Banana Community Park. Okay. We'll get, we'll get that corrected. Okay, so any other changes? Okay, uh, seeing none. Uh, can I get, and with that amendment to the change, uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Thank you, Elaine. Second? Second. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Okay, we're good. All right. Uh, uh, as far as Pacheco Park, I did uh, send out a letter to the Director of Parks and Recreation to, to uh, document everything that our community complains about the park, <coughs> and uh, the Director should be aware of all that, and... Uh, and, and of course, uh, Tony and I will follow up on ongoing issues. So, Mr. Fontes, uh, we'll be working with you. Uh, the other thing is uh, moving on to our establishment of board committees. Just to let the uh, community know that over the last month, we we had we did hold a special meeting, and uh, we and of course, uh, as chair, uh, I uh, appointed uh, individuals from our board to give everybody a good, fair opportunity to to work issues for the for our community. And I just want to mention these committees. We've added five new committees. Uh, legislative Capital Improvement Programs will be led by Andrew Itsuno. Development Planning and Zoning Committee will be by uh, Blake Yokotaki. Traffic and Transportation by myself. Uh, Health, Education, Welfare by Mitsuko Haikawa. Community Relations and Publicity will be done by uh, Antonio Valesco. Parks and Recreation also by uh, Tony. Public Safety Committee, uh, Elaine Funakoshi is, is leading that effort. And as far as uh, Senior Citizen Care Committee, uh, Ms. Kelsey Poaha, and Agriculture Sustainability, uh, being, uh, Ms. Mitsuko Hayakawa, and then a Transit Oriented Development Committee will be by myself. And then for the Pearl Harbor Restoration Advisory Board, Mr. Guy Inouye, and then the OMPO Citizens Advisory Committee will be by myself. So uh, we'll be aggressively this next session tackling a number of issues. The key thing is uh, to try to get these uh, uh, resolutions put together to help the uh, legislative and, and city council be able to work on new bills to improve our laws, improve our quality of life. Uh, board members, any questions that you, anything you want to add there? Chair, I have a, a comment. Yes. Uh, sorry you were ill and I couldn't make the meeting as some of the other members, but. Uh, the draft was sent to Mitsuko to be read at the meeting according to the Sunshine Law. Had I known she was going to distribute it, I could have done it myself, and I could have included my comments. Uh, however, I was pleased that it prompted the chair to come up with his ideas because for two years I've been on the board, well, I've been, I got the same old thing, that goal and objective, it was so cumbersome and all. That's why I made my comments, you know, and so anyway, I'm glad that what's happening, and uh, what was I gonna say? Um, my question is though, um, what are the five standard committee? Which ones are the five standard committee? The, the standard ones that we've had traditionally? The, can, the can you name them? Yes, the, the, uh, the LCIP, which is the Legislative Capital Improvement Programs, yeah. uh, Development Planning and Zoning, DPZ, yeah. Traffic Transportation, TNT Community, Health, education, and welfare, and in our community relations and public uh, uh, publicity committee, which is uh, the naming convention for this, is in standard with other neighborhood boards and also with the uh, neighborhood commission. So my committee isn't one of the standard then, yeah? No, this uh, this this actually these committees these new ones are actually part of other neighborhood boards. They have those committees. So, okay. so we're adding those to because our uh, standard committees have a different. Uh, requirement than our other committees, you know. So it puts me in a different light. Thank you. The other thing is uh, for the minutes of the special committee meeting, there was no attachment as to what your proposal was and what mine was, and it was a motion, so I would think that it should have been attached. 
because it's part of a motion and we don't know what the motion was really about. Okay, I can't answer that right now. So, but thank you for bringing that up. And of course, uh, the uh, we're looking for your experience and especially <coughs> your involvement in the community as far as that public safety committee, very critical area. And crosswalks is so important right now. We need to look at a lot I'm of sorry, people's. A crosswalk is not my department. Okay, well, we'll be working with you because it's still a safety issue. Um, okay, uh, any other uh, things to bring up? Uh, yep, go ahead. About the Crawl City Thunder to recognize. Okay, go ahead. And, uh, make, uh, that motion. make a motion to recognize the Crawl City Thunder Baybirds baseball team. Aye. Aye. for next month. Okay, so we will recognize recognize the baseball team uh, next month. And uh, what's interesting is where they played ball is my hometown. So I just missed them by a couple weeks because I was there during that during those playoffs. So, okay. So uh, as far as announcements, next regular neighborhood board meeting was scheduled for Tuesday, October twenty fourth, uh, uh, at seven o'clock p.m. here at Wild District Park. And of course, the Pearl City Neighborhood Board twenty one meetings are broadcast on Focus Channel. 49 on a third Tuesday at 4 p.m. and a fourth Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, other than that, uh, I want to thank Chair, everyone. I yes. have a question. One more thing. I mean, uh, channel 13449, thank you for listing it, is no longer on the air. I found out it's an <coughs> air channel, you know, all those dash 49. Uh, it's, so it's, anyway, it's no longer on there. And then remember, we were supposed to get a get together? Yes. So when is a good Sunday? I bet nobody really paid attention well, to it. What we'll do is, uh, I think the board, do, do you all agree that we could do a, uh, a board social coming up and we'll let Elaine look at, work with us and email? Well, Detroit. they were supposed to look at it. Last meeting, I told them we, I had a couple of dates, but they were going to look at it and then decide which one. So they have to do it tonight before. They can do it right after. We can adjourn and talk about it, but we need to decide because we're going to get too close to Halloween, and then after that comes all the craziness, so we need to decide tonight. Thank okay, well, well, we'll come up with a date. I left my calendar at home. But, uh, but thank you for bringing that up, and I, I, think, I don't think anybody's in disagreement about getting together for a social, especially with the holiday periods that are coming up. So then, any other thing? Any other board member comments? Tony, anything? Here we go, minutes ago. Um, about the special meeting um, for the minutes I typed up the minutes and I did um, list the uh, proposed um, committees and the chairs um, as recommended by um, our chair and also during if you read the discussion it does say uh, what was amendment or um, as well so um, I think it was pretty clear or I believe it's pretty clear what we voted on. No, we didn't get a list. You said uh, Larry's list was voted for and mine was not. So we need the list. I want to know what was the list. Okay, we'll, we'll give you the list here. Thank you. Ten minutes. Okay, other than that, the uh, Pearl City Neighborhood Board is adjourned. Thank you.